and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at TS set or how to set your time variable in starter to either a time series, panel data and even a business calendar. So you know what, let's get to it. So in general, we will consider three types of data when we are working with well data sets, for instance, data or any other software of your choosing. But today, of course, we're going to be looking at the version from Stata. So if I would uh, first go in and use an example data set using the same one I've been using so far, namely auto, if we take a quick look at this, we see what is known as just a cross-sectional data set. Well, what is a cross-sectional data set? Well, just imagine you take a cross-section of some population at one point in time. In other words, you got observations on a lot of entities at one point in time. In this case, we have a lot of cars at just in 19, well, 78, right? So that's one point in time. Here in Stata, we don't have to tell Stata anything. It is well known to Stata this is a cross-sectional data set. That is the default. However, if we were to have another type of data, say a time series, then we would have to tell Stata what we are dealing with in order for Stata to understand, hey, I can now use, for instance, time series operations, like a lagged operator or so forth, and any other regression type of analysis you may want to do in a more time series framework. So you know what, for that we would need another data set. So I have to leave my beloved auto data set and come with something else. And here, fortunately, Stata has another example data set I can use for this. So here I'm going to use the one called TS line two, for example. In this data set as well, we have a day variable, which is going to be our time variable. So the first thing you always have to do is figure out what is your day variable. Here, well, the date is day easy. We have calorie, the upper bound and the lower bound of calories. Now we want to tell Stata that this is our date indicator variable, and that is done with the TS set command. Let's first check out how this TS set actually works. You see, declare data to be time series, for instance, and it works both for time series and for panel. But let's first describe what is a time series. Well, on the contrary, when you have a cross-section that is multiple entities at, well, one point in time, here we typically consider just one entity at multiple points in time. So the TS the data set is just, well, a person's calorie consumption over a course of time. But you could also think of it as just looking at one stock, one exchange rate, or just one given price series, and that will also be characterized as a time series. Now, the way we would set this here is simply just use TS set followed by the name of the time variable. And of course, it will find its default in this case, which is the change is one day a piece. However, you could of course go in and just use one of the options here to specify what the delta should be. That is, what is the change between each observation? So you can specify it here to be daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and so forth. So there's many, many options. This is how you would do it for just a time series. But if it's a little different when you work with a panel data. First of all, what is a panel data set then or longitudinal data? Well, we're basically just taking cross-sectional, we're taking time series, we're merging them together such that now we have multiple entities at multiple points in time. Think about a whole index of stocks or a survey of multiple number of people that you are serving at least two points in time. Could be many other things as such. So, for showing this, we're going to be using yet another data set. So let me first clear out what we have in Stata. And now we're going to use something from the internet that we can download directly using the command web use. And the data set is called invest2 for this example. So here we are borrowing a data set online, which gives us the investment in a market for stock. And it gives for one company, you see here company number one, over 20 points in time. So you observe this company 20 times, then it goes to company number two, which you also observe 20 points at different time, right? And you go for company three and so forth. Here, you can use TSN in the same way. However, you would have to specify two variables now, not only the date here, from which I of course would have to remember which one it is. It's time, that would be your date set here. But you also have to recognize what variable in your data set is the one that characterizes uniquely each entity. In this case, company would be perfectly fine as it gives an indicator what company you're dealing with. So we can TS set. In this case here, it will just be time and company. So let's put it in time and company. 
And it will even tell us we have five different companies, so one to five. It will take one unit a piece. You can, of course, also specify what time it should be, whether it, whether this time variable is it a yearly, daily, or monthly, that you would have to specify if you know the data set better. It indicates also here, in terms of the panel variables, this is a strongly balanced uh, set, which in this case here just tells you that there's no missing observations in these indicators. There could be, of course, missing observations somewhere else in other variables. That is where data can be a little misleading with a strongly balanced, because it only refers to whether the time of the company doesn't contain any missing values in this case. That settles it for the use of TS set to declare time series or panel, but there exists one more different case that I would like to highlight for you guys. For that, we need a, a different data set yet again. Luckily, we can find it in the example data set stored in Stata, and this time I want S&P 500. Let's use it and let's take a look at it. In this case here, we have a daily data set you can clearly see. However, as you're gonna see, when I TS set this daily variable here, which is, if I remember correctly, just called date, then we can see that, see, we're going to use this one later. That's going to be fun. We can simply just say TS set the date. And we notice here, but with gaps. And now if I am to use any time series operations here, this won't work. This will simply give an error because there's gaps in the day. How do we fix that? We do this by introducing a business calendar. And that is where I have found this nice little code here to show you guys how to make a nice little business calendar. So the first thing we have to do is use TS set clear. Oh, I should also do this right. I don't mind doing this here. This also see that I can also make typos. So TS set clear. And now we have cleared the time variable here. Now we can declare a business calendar. What does a business calendar do? It take into account these potential days from which in this case, the stock market is not active bank holidays, weekends, whatnot. And the way it works, it's a bcal, that's the command. It creates a calendar from this given date. And then you can specify what should your new date variable be called. It's just easy to call it bcal date. You can also call it date two, date whatever, or business date. And replace is if you already had one in place, you could replace the one that already existed. In this case here, you see, this is what it's gonna tell us. It's gonna tell us the range from when it starts, when it ends. And it's also going to tell you how many days were included and omitted as a result of these business days. And now I can simply just go in and TS set this bcal date that I just created. bcal underscore date. And it will now tell me day one day, but there's no gaps because that's been controlled for in this business calendar. That's very nice. And of course, when you just look at the data, you see it just generated here at the end here. And this is how you would do a business calendar. So we have looked with regular time series, we looked at panel data, and now business calendar here at the end to take into account these special cases with, for instance, the stock market. That was all I have to show to you today. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until next time.